Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. DA cholera outbreak is worsening in Haiti, just as an approaching storm threatens to displace hundreds of thousands of earthquake survivors. New figures show that 105 people have died from cholera since Saturday, bringing the death toll so far to 442. The United Nations is warning the outbreak could spread drastically when Tropical Storm Thomas makes landfall Friday. The United Nations humanitarian coordinator in Haiti, Nigel Fisher, said aid agencies are over stretched. I think it, it, it's, the hurricane is, is so huge that uh, all over the country is hit severely. Uh, I think if two, three, four, five departments are hit, we'll be able to cope to some extent. More than that, we will really, really be stretched, and we're going to have to make difficult choices about where to put scarce assets. Some 1.5 million people are said to be at risk if rainfall from the storm causes massive flooding. The Haitian government's ordered the voluntary evacuation of camps for earthquake survivors in low-lying areas, but many have nowhere to go. A resident of a camp in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince, said aid groups haven't offered help. The organization we have in this country, they don't come here to help us, you know. They was to help us, you know, two months after the earthquake. But after that, you know, you can't talk to anybody you want to, any park, you know. We, don't, we never receive help after two months after the earthquake. You know, that's really bad. We live in a bad condition, you know. That's, that's why, you know, and last time we had a big storm pass, you know, many people just die. And this park where two people die, you know. Why now we hear about this storm? We come, we don't prepare yet. Republican leaders are vowing to repeal President Obama's signature health care law and extend Bush administration tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans in the wake of their midterm election gains. One day after winning control of the House and reducing the Democrat Senate majority, House Republican leader John Boehner took aim at the health care bill, which he said could bankrupt the United States. I believe that uh, the health care bill that was enacted by uh, the current Congress will kill jobs in America. Uh, ruin the best health care system in the world, and bankrupt our country. Uh, that means that we have to do everything we can uh, to try to repeal this bill and replace it with common-sense reforms that will bring down the cost of health insurance. President Obama, meanwhile, addressed the election results with a news conference at the White House. He called the outcome humbling and said frustration with the economy had fueled the Democrats' losses. Over the last two years, we've made progress. But clearly, too many Americans haven't felt that progress yet, and they told us that yesterday. And as president, I take responsibility for that. What yesterday also told us is that no one party will be able to dictate where we go from here, that we must find common ground in order to set, uh, in, in order to make progress uh, on some uncommonly difficult challenges. In an apparent nod to Republicans' electoral gains, President Obama made no mention of his call to end Bush-era tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans and suggested he may abandon a key energy bill stalled in the Senate. Democrats received a boost Wednesday when incumbent Michael Bennett was declared winner over Tea Party Republican Ken Buck in Colorado's Senate race. Tallying is still underway in Washington state and Alaska Senate races and results could be weeks away. Democrats will have a 52 or 53 seat Senate majority, depending on whether Washington state incumbent Patty Murray is reelected. Opponents of LGBT rights, meanwhile, are celebrating the unprecedented ouster of three Iowa Supreme Court justices who helped legalize same-sex marriage in the state last year. The three were part of the unanimous decision of Iowa's seven-member court to overturn a law defining marriages between a man and a woman. The judges were running for new terms unopposed, but a majority voted to remove them from the bench. Several right-wing groups, including National Organization for Marriage and the American Family Association, poured money into the campaign campaign for the judge's removal. In a statement, the judges criticized what they called, quote, an unprecedented attack by out-of-state special interest groups. The Federal Reserve has unveiled a new stimulus measure to inject some $600 billion into the nation's banking system. On Wednesday, the Fed said it would continue to purchase U.S. Treasury debt to boost demand for government bonds and keep interest rates low. In Pakistan, at least 12 people have been killed in a series of U.S. drone attacks. Pakistani officials say the strikes targeted suspected militants in North Waziristan. The U.S. has unveiled plans for a $500 million expansion of its embassy in the Afghan capital of Kabul. U.S. Ambassador Carl Eikenberry says the project will be completed in June of 2014.
Israel has suspended strategic dialogue with Britain over a British law allowing the arrest of visiting foreign officials accused of human rights violations. A number of Israeli military and civilian leaders have canceled trips to Britain in recent years over fears of arrest for war crimes. In a visit to Israel, British Foreign Affairs Secretary William Hague pledged that the law will be repealed. It's important that, we're, that uh, Israeli politicians are able to visit the United Kingdom. Uh, we are changing the law. It doesn't just affect Israel. It can affect other countries uh, as well. Uh, so that any uh, arrest in the United Kingdom as a universal jurisdiction would have to be one that had a reasonable prospect of a prosecution, so that it is not used for trivial or political uh, reasons. The Mine Safety and Health Administration says it's filed its first legal action to compel the coal giant Massey Energy to address safety violations at a Kentucky mine. On Wednesday, MSHA said Massey is engaged in a pattern of violation of health and safety standards at its mine number one in Kentucky's Pike County. The move comes as regulators continue to probe the April 5th deaths of 29 miners at Massey's Upper Big Branch Mine in West Virginia. A top CIA lawyer is asserting the kidnapping practice known as extraordinary rendition is legal under U.S. law, even if it leads to torture. Writing in the Loyola University Chicago Law Journal, Daniel Pines, an assistant general counsel at the CIA, states, quote, there are virtually no legal restrictions on these types of operations. Indeed, U.S. law does not even preclude the rendering of individuals to a third country in instances where the third country may subject the rendered individual to torture. Pines adds that he is expressing his individual view, not an official U.S. government stance. San Francisco is poised to become the first city to ban the high-calorie children's Happy Meal served at the McDonald's fast food chain. The San Francisco Board of Supervisors has voted to bar restaurants from giving toys with meals containing excessive fat and sugar. Under the rule, restaurants would also have to serve fruits and vegetables alongside any meals with toys. The measure awaits a full vote next week. It would go into effect as early as December of 2011. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy.